everyone today in this video we will be discussing the third module of object oriented concepts it's a very small and easy module so let's get started with the first uh, topic which is class fundamentals in class you need to know two things what is a class class has some uh, variables and the functions and it has um, a name also by using which you can create uh, different objects okay and you can initialize the values for uh, different objects okay so what's an object to declare an object you have to first uh, declare the class which is the blueprint and after that use the class name and write the object name here and after that use the new keyword to um, initialize the class here okay by using this object will be created which will have the um, variables declared inside the class and the functions okay so this will be uh, after writing this statement only a box will be created after writing this statement new uh, this object will be created with the width uh, height and depth okay these are the variables as well as functions will be included okay method is nothing but a small snippet of code which can be called whenever needed okay so for example if i write the class box function if i want to calculate the volume i'll need not uh, write every time uh, h into l into b i can define a function volume where i uh, where i'll have print h into l into b and whenever i need i can call in the main function declare, uh, declare the object and call b dot wall that will print the value of this um, that will uh, print the volume of the object okay Suppose that I have uh, created an object here which has the variables x, y, and z. Now, what I want is whenever I create an object, it should automatically initialize x value as 1, y value as 2, and z value as 3. So, for that, I can use constructor. Constructor of two types. First one is default constructor. Means all the time when I create here in my class, there's a single variable x. Okay. Whenever I create an object of my class, at that time, the value of x will be 10. This is default constructor. Whereas if I want some edited value, means what the user wants to enter, at that time, I can um, put a variable here, int i. So in that case, whatever user passes while creating an object, that value will be initialized to this object. So the object will be x here, and what will the value of um, the x value here? Whatever the user passes here, okay? Uh, to achieve this, we'll be using parameterized constructor, okay? See here, sometimes um, when you create an object here, at that time, we need to initialize the variables of the same object, okay? So for the, uh, in this case, width, height, and double, okay? width height and double for initializing the same variables we'll be using this keyword this will refer to the same object okay if i want to initialize uh, suppose that width is 5 uh, height is 2 and uh, d is 7 okay so uh, if i want to initialize the three values what are you doing this dot width means the same box which i am calling from the function that values with uh, that box which should be w and that box height should be h and that uh, box depth should be d where h and um, w h and d are 5 2 and 7 okay sometimes the class variables and the uh, function arguments will have the same name at that time these functions uh, these variable names will be hided okay that's known as instance variable hiding okay overloaded constructor means same names but different um, functions okay suppose that there is a class student here and i have two um, constructors of the same name but i have different parameters first one is no parameter and second one is i n and a okay so in this case the um, values of id name and age will be 10 a b c and 10 whereas in this case whatever i enter here in the argument that will be passed on to the variables okay after we have um, done with the object means at that time uh, the object which is uh, dynamically allocated is uh, no more needed it can be deleted from the memory okay the two types first one is uh, finalize for uh, finalize is not for deleting but for um, executing any code before the object gets deleted okay so by using finalize if this is the function of finalize at that time an object is created here and before this block it gets deleted okay so before deletion it will print out some message like the object is uh, getting deleted okay uh, for that uh, finalize function uh, can be called and the next one is gc if you want to explicitly uh, delete any object you can call the function gc okay it will explicitly uh, clear, um, clear the object from the memory or if you don't do the uh, if you don't do also anyway automatically the program will delete the object after it uh, goes out of the scope okay the main aim of object oriented programming was to keep the data safe from the external world okay so if this is the class here and the object and the data is here okay from the external world not everyone can access it only a few uh, only a few are uh, able to access so who will be able to access and who will be uh, not able to access that is uh, determined by four parameters uh, known as uh, private default protected and public okay so see here i have declared here public class a that means this class can be accessed by anyone and private in b this cannot be accessed by anyone only the class members of this uh, 
only the data members and the function of the same class can access it okay and protected has some limitations means it's uh, not that private and not that public also okay so the more information is uh, given here like within the class within the package outside the package and uh, with this uh, by the subclass and outside the package okay and uh, modes are given here uh, so by referring to the values of uh, row and column you can know if uh, it's possible to access or not okay inheritance means the getting of the same uh, inheriting the same features from the parent class and by using that you can edit the values here okay so there are three types mainly first one is single level inheritance means uh, in this uh, program I'll, i've taken class a and um, if the class b extends class a okay this is the keyword which you need to write for extend is a keyword uh, which we need to write um, if you want to inherit uh, the properties of um, the super class okay so here the class is defined as this one this one class class a so it has two variables and two functions okay so class b is uh, extending class a so all the things of class a these all variables and the functions will come in b when you extend it okay but it will not be visible but you can access from the class b okay so suppose that in b the function display is uh, declared and it access the uh, variable y where is y y is the um, variable of uh, class a so you can access that from b okay coming to multi level inheritance there will be uh, multiple levels in the inheritance so if b extends from a and c extends from b c can access the data members of a okay so this is the class a and next we have class b extends a and then class c extends b and uh, in this class we'll be accessing the elements of a okay see here we are accessing the elements of a this uh, type of uh, inheritance is known as multi level inheritance the next one is multiple inheritance multiple inheritance means there are many uh, base classes and uh, one subclass is inheriting many base classes this is not supported in java because of the main reason that if there are same functions in both suppose that add okay add is also declared uh, in this class also in this class so uh, when this uh, subclass calls um, add at that time this should be called or this should be called that's a problem so to avoid that java does not support multiple inheritance but we can still uh, use multiple inheritance not in the form of class but in the form of interface a slightly different concept than classes uh, interfaces uh, will be learning in module 4 okay and uh, hierarchical inheritance is the um, reverse of the opposite of the multiple inheritance here the main class and uh, there are many subclasses okay this is possible because uh, there is no possibility of any error here so this is supported by java okay super keyword has uh, two purposes first is used to access the data uh, variables of the super class let's see by an example see here the, uh, these are two classes class a which has the int a and int b class b also has int a and int b when uh, b want to access these variables if it tries to access what it will access this one or this one there will be ambiguity to avoid this the super is used to access this one we'll be using super dot um, a so in this case we are accessing super dot b which means the b variable of class a okay so for that uh, super is used and second one is see here if uh, a class extends another class means uh, this is the class a and b is extending a if i have to create an object of b at that time all the variables of b are included all the variables of a are included here so when i create an object of b first this object is created then this object okay so for that i have to call the constructor of this class first that means I'll be using super keyword for calling the constructor of this class. Okay, for, for that the uh, super keyword is used. Okay, so these are two um, purposes for which the super keyword is used. Okay, the difference between method overriding and method overloading. Method overriding means uh, it has to do with inheritance. Class A, class B. In class A, a function is there void add. It adds the sum of A and B. When I inherit the class A. I'll add a um, third variable called j. What is j? J will uh, find the sum of a, b as well as c. Okay. So um, when I um, print the value, I want the value to be a plus b plus c. But in the previous class, it is a plus b only, and it has the same name. So in this case, I will override this function 
and write here with the new definition okay this is called as overriding coming to overloading overloading means um, same name see here add 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 these are th uh, three functions with the same name but different return type and different parameters by using this we can uh, return different values um, when from the main function the object is calling the uh, functions okay based on what parameters it sends the function will be executed okay abstract class is same as the uh, normal class but here only we will have the function declaration it can be defined um, by the classes which extends it okay so for example this class area program uh, area program okay in this uh, the abstract function is double area so only it is declared so whichever class extends it it can define as follows suppose that class uh, rectangle extends uh, area program at that time the area can be defined as uh, length into breadth okay whereas if the triangle extends it will be defining as um, dimension 1 into dimension 2 by 2 okay so if it uh, defines the function here we will need to override every time that's very time consuming so uh, for that purpose only abstract class has a uh, class definition the object of this class cannot be created okay only the classes can be inherited okay see here we created a um, rectangle object and called r dot area at that time the area of rectangle will be uh, called and if we create a triangle here at that time if i call ar dot uh, area at that time triangles area will be called okay same function but uh, different uh, implementations because um, we have uh, defined the functions differently okay this is the main use of abstract class final keyword in java is used to restrict the user means wherever you use a final um, if it is in a variable method or a class it will become constant okay let's see an example here i have declared a class bike with a keyword final and inside that i have a variable speed limit which is set to 90 and by using a keyword final and then final void run so what happens is if i use a final keyword in a class this class cannot be inherited okay and secondly if i uh, use a uh, keyword final for a variable the speed will be constant okay it means the variable's value will be constant it cannot be changed and the third one final void run if i use a, a keyword final before a function it will be um, it cannot be overridden this function uh, cannot be modified okay so if i try this uh, um, line of code here it will show as invalid okay because it cannot be inherited and it can, uh, cannot be overridden and uh, the value of uh, speed limit uh, cannot be changed okay the next topic is exceptional handling this means if there happens to be any error in the program at some part of the code the whole program should not stop running only that part should be uh, should be stopped and the rest of the uh, program should be run to achieve this what we can do is exceptional handling there are five um, keywords by using which we can implement uh, exceptional handling the first two and finally these three are used together and throw throw and throws are used together let's see each one of these firstly i'll uh, give you a overview of uh, how the try uh, try and catch block works try and write some code here like a plus b and then catch catch if there is any error and print out what is the error and finally this will always be executed uh, even if there is error or no error in both cases this will be executed okay so let's see an example this is the try block this is the catch block and this is the finally block so anyway this will be printed out of the block um, e even if there is error or no error both cases this will be printed so what is happening uh, so what's happening inside the try catch block here i have declared an array of size 2 and i am trying to access an element 3 a of 3 see i have declared an array of uh, 2 means um, 0 1 2 and i am trying to access a of 3 that's not possible it's an error so that will be caught here and it will be printed exception thrown okay so the output will be exception thrown and where it is thrown and what is the exception that will be shown and out of the block from here it will be printed okay the next one is throw and throws see actually the uh, throw and throws are objects which means it will uh, have the function of uh, throwing an error okay so let's uh, understand by, uh, by an example try throw new arithmetic exception demo so a uh, demo will be an object here it will be created and it will um, 
throw an exception no matter if there is an exception or no exception but since we have created the object here it will uh, definitely throw an error okay this code we have uh, purposely written uh, throw new arithmetic exception so if you want to purposely throw an error even if there is no error or there is error at that time we can create an object of uh, uh, class throw okay at that time the exception will be caught here and it will be output exception caught demo okay so demo was the name of the object okay this is the use of throw and throws is the same thing but it is um, but we will not um, declare a try catch block inside the function so void check is a function here and throws arithmetic exception is written here so if there is an arithmetic exception it will be thrown outside the uh, function okay so so inside the function here uh, first it will be printed inside check function and then throw new arithmetic exception demo so here we are creating an object so it will definitely throw an error okay and the main difference between throws and throw is we are writing try catch block in the main function in throws okay so it will uh, call the check function and then when it will come here it will uh, create a new object then this object will be passed to the main function and here it will be printed caught e okay so the output will be e is the object uh, which is named as demo that will be thrown here that will be uh, output here and inside check function is uh, printed from here okay so the main difference is uh, you can see this is in the uh, function here like see uh, it's uh, like void abc okay inside this function you are writing whereas uh, in throws you are not writing inside the function inside the function uh, you are not uh, you cannot see any try or catch block that will be in the main function but here you can see the uh, try and catch block inside the function okay this is a very important uh, point which we uh, need to know from exam point of view okay